Stream. My name is Sam and I'm the minister here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Teaching Stream is our online teaching ministry here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church and it is primarily intended to form the curriculum for our small groups. Welcome. This is the final episode in our series Foundations, Foundational Studies in Following Jesus. These are the things that we believe that you need to know. Our final session is all about relating to the world. How do we, as those who have met Jesus, who recognise that we have received his grace, recognise that God is the one who is the sustainer and giver of all things, recognise that we need to be part of a church family, how do we now relate to the world? That is what we're going to be talking about today. The text that we're going to be springing from, but we are going to rush around our Bibles a little bit today, is Colossians 4 and it's verses uh, 5 and 6. So I'm going to pause, invite you to pause this video in a moment and you can find that in your Bibles. I will read it to you. But before I invite you to pause, I'm going to pray. Loving Father God, we thank you that you are with us here by your Spirit. Lord, I pray that we would hear your voice in all that we do together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, Grab your Bibles and find Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6. So Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6 says this. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. When we met Jesus Christ and we recognise that our sins are forgiven, we have a question that will go on in our mind. Now, as those who have been redeemed by Jesus, even though we do recognise that we will continue sinning and be continuously in need of God's grace, as those who are set apart, newly part of God's family, how do we then relate to the world? Uh, and when we talk of the world, I mean those who are not yet a part of God's family. Throughout church history, different people have answered this in different ways. We have those who actually withdraw from society. The uh, desert fathers, uh, monastic communities. We even have within our own Baptist heritage, Anabaptists on the continent who remove themselves to make a, a completely separate community away from the family. Monastic communities, as I said, remove themselves from the world so as to focus solely on God. Admittedly, we now have uh, orders of nuns and monks who then actually reintegrate into the world and do great things, but there are still those orders that are completely cut off from the world. Now, why is it that, that people do this? Well, there's two reasons, I think. The first is the idea that they might get contaminated by the world. And in fairness, throughout the Bible, there is this idea that the world can somehow taint or tempt us. But of course, we believe that through the Holy Spirit, God actually enables us to withstand against temptation. The other reason I believe people withdraw from the world is a simple one of fear and familiarity. Once you have found this great new thing, actually, sometimes what we want to do is protect it for ourselves. Like if you've got a shiny new bike, it's quite hard to invite your friend to have a little ride on it. So we have this option, which is to withdraw from the world. However, Christianity is a missional religion. It is all about propagating new Christians. We are in the mould of Christ who introduced more people to himself. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. We are called not to abandon the world, but to be a part of the world. Here, the writer of Colossians, Paul, says that. Let's read it again. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. 
Paul is saying here, we mustn't withdraw ourselves from society. We must not draw us, withdraw ourselves from the world. But we must be careful that when we interact with the world, we do so in a way that is gracious and loving. That our words reflect Christ. That it is seasoned with salt, picking up on Jesus' language from the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. There is a parable that Jesus tells in Luke's Gospel. You'll find it in Luke 13 verses 20 and 21, where he says, The kingdom of God is like leaven. A woman has bought a large amount of flour and she gets a small amount of leaven and then she works the leaven, which is yeast, into the dough and eventually is thoroughly mixed into the large amount of the flour. We as the citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we as the citizens of the kingdom of God are called to work our way into the world until we spread out into the world, transforming the world into the image of the kingdom of God, just like the woman mixes the leaven into the dough. And what is the result of leaven being mixed into dough? Well, that dough begins to rise. And this is the hope for our world. Jesus put it like this at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. So if you turn in your Bibles to chapter 5 of Matthew's Gospel, and I'll read from uh, verse 14 through to verse 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The reason we do good deeds is twofold. The first and primary reason, as with the entirety of our lives, is to glorify God. The reason we do good deeds is because Jesus died on the cross for us, redeeming us, allowing us to have a relationship with our Father. And the rest of our life is a big thank you for what he has done for us. And so when we do good deeds, it is part of our thank you. There is a knock-on effect, though, when we are doing good deeds in front of those who don't yet know Jesus. Jesus tells us when we let our light shine before others, they should see the good deeds that we are doing. And rather than thinking, oh, that's jolly good, that Sam's a nice person. In fact, what they should do is see the good deeds that we are doing and give God the glory. Of course, it's difficult for people to give God glory unless they know that we are Christians. I want to share with you a really simple uh, model for being leaven in the dough and uh, being gracious and, uh, and wise in front of non-believers. It is this, and it is this simple. It is the most simple model for being involved in the Great Commission. It is the simplest model for being a missionary Christian, which is what we are all called to be. It is the simplest model for evangelism. When you meet people, tell them that you are a Christian. And then, don't be horrible. Don't be a twerp. Don't let them down. <laughs> it's that simple. We tell people that we are Christians and then we behave just like Jesus has commanded us to. In this way, people will see that we credit us being a nice person, a nice human being, to being a Christian. Now, I recognise that we know lots of nice people that aren't Christians and probably vice versa is true. But how simple a model for being a missionary is that? We tell people that we're Christians and then we be the best people we can possibly be. This is being the leaven in the dome. This is shining our light and not putting a uh, bowl over the top of it. This is bringing salt into our conversations. Tell people you're a Christian and don't be a so-and-so. This is a simple way that we can be missionaries. 
In Colossians, what Paul is effectively saying is this. When you are around people who don't yet know Jesus, don't let Jesus down. Demonstrate who he is by your actions and never ever assume that one of your interactions isn't an opportunity for someone to meet Jesus. This is how we interact with the world as children of God. This brings us to the end of our foundations course. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I know that I certainly have. Going back to the foundations helps us to make sure that our lives are built on the solid rock of Jesus. If you have any feedback, please do give me an email or speak to me at the end of our services. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Next week, we are going back to 1 Corinthians and my dad, the Reverend Graham Dunn is going to be leading us for the next few weeks. I can't wait to hear his teaching and particularly the way in which we should, we should be shaped and moulded as the Church of God. I love 1 Corinthians and I know that it's going to speak powerfully to us at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church in the coming weeks. Now, before we leave, shall we pray? Loving Father God, thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and that through his life, death and resurrection, we have been made your children. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to be wise when we speak with outsiders, to not see any conversation with others as not being an opportunity to shine the light of Christ into their lives. Lord, help us to have the courage to say that we are Christians, then empower us to live lives that would make being a Christian attractive to others. I ask that in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.